Coming up next, it's the Flintstones on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. What do you call cartoon stars who have become legendary icons? Stars who are adored by boys and girls all over the world, whose lines you know by heart before they even say them. You might call them the kings and queens of cartoons. Well, in an effort to save time, we call them Boomer Royalty. How do you do, folks? This month, let's enjoy the dulcet tones of one of Anna Barbera's best singers. Oh, my darling Clementine. True, there's not a lot of competition, but no one sings Oh My Darling Clementine quite like one Mr. Huckleberry Hound. Oh my darling, what's her name? No matter what scenario he finds himself in, Old Huck always has a song in his heart. Them's mighty pretty words. And for that, we're making Huckleberry Hound Boomer Royalty. Today at 2 on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Watch them move, they're grooving in a trance with stars in their eyes. They sure do love to dance. The beat is taking over, so just give it a chance. Just wiggle, twist, jiggle, shake, and dance, dance, dance. Shazam! Don't forget, Fred, tomorrow's the big bowling league playoffs. Hey, uh, you think Wilma will let you out of the house? Listen, Barney, a man's house is his castle, and I am king in my castle. Yeah, I know. I heard Wilma say she'd crown you if you tried to sneak out. <laughs> Very funny. Hey, hey, look, Fred, somebody's moving the house. Sheep! When do you suppose they're moving it to? The city dump? Hey, oh, I never saw such a spooky looking house. Wow, did you see that? How'd you like to have that next door to you? There goes the neighborhood. Watching the Flintstones on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Oh, uh, hey, Alfred. Home at last. Thanks, pal. See you in the morning. Wilma, I'm home. What's for dinner? <laughs> Have you seen Daddy? Daddy? <laughs> 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 well, I swear one of these days 
it's going to be Dino or me. <laughs> oh, cut it out, Dino. I was only kidding. <laughs> Honest, Wilma. Vultures and bats and a dark rain cloud over the roof. They had to be taking it to the city dump. Vultures and bats? Who'd want to live in a house like that? Beats me. Well, whoever it is, I wouldn't want to know them. Hey, Fred, open up! Open up! Wilma, you poor dear. I'm so sorry. About what? Yeah, what do you mean? Oh, bad news, Fred. Look out the window. Fred! No, tell me it isn't true. That looks like the creepy house you were telling me about. They must have bought the lot next door. Who? Who? The creeps who live in a creepy house like that. That's who. Oh, uh, cheer up, Fred. It could have been worse. Huh? How? He could have moved next door to me. <laughs> That's not funny, Bon. You're in trouble, too. This whole block is in trouble. Uh, why? With a crummy house like that in the neighborhood, you know what's gonna happen to the value of your property? Uh, who? Oh. Right down the drain. Right down the drain? Look, the front door is opening. Wow, what the heck is that? It looks like a milk bottle with a note in it. I know that. I mean the hand. The giant hairy hand. Look, there it is again. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's pulling in the clothesline. A shirt with four sleeves? I don't believe it. Would you believe a two-neck sweater? Or a pair of pants with four legs? Freaks! That's what's living next door to us. Sideshow freaks. Uh, you're lucky, Fred. You won't have to pay to see them. All you gotta do is look out the window. <laughs> Keep that up on, and in about two seconds, you're going out the window. Oh, I don't think I'd like that, Fred. My mind's made up. I'm gonna do something about this. Like what? I don't know yet, but I'll think of something. Either that or you could move. Oh, no. Not Frank Flintstone. Nothing's gonna budge me from this spot. <laughs> Come up now, Budgie. It's one of them vultures from next door. <laughs> I don't care what you say, Fred. We always pay a welcome call to someone who moves into the neighborhood. And these people live right next door. There's got to be a zoning violation about keeping vultures for pets. I'm going to look into that first thing in the morning. Come on, Fred. Smile. Make them feel welcome. Ah, I'm only coming along to see who lives in this spook joint. Ready? Yeah. Uh, we're the Flintstones, your next door neighbors. Oh, how nice of you to call. Come in, come in. Thank you. Please, Mr. Flintstone, do come in. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Come on, Pebbles. Oblivia, my dear, our neighbors have come to call. Oh, how delightful. I'm making curtains for the window. Don't you just love them? My dear, these are the Flintstones. Oh, what a charming family. We're the Frankenstones. Uh, we're Wilma, Fred, and Pebble. So nice to meet you, Pebbles. Thanks, Pebbles. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Wilma. She's Wilma. Oh, dear, I'm so terrible with names. Uh, here's a little gift for the house. Oh, thank you. Please, folks, won't you sit down? Love to. But we ain't staying long. We adore this lovely neighborhood, Mrs. Flintstone. Yes, indeed. It's so quiet and peaceful here. And we intend to keep it that way. Quiet and peaceful. What's that? Oh, it's our daughter playing her favorite album. 
cemetery serenade. A lovely tune. Oh, Hidia, please turn off your stereo. We have company. Hidia, darling, these lovely people live next door. Mrs. Flintstone and Pebble. Hello, Hidia. And this is Mr. Flintstone. How are you? How do you do, ma'am, sir? And how are you, Pebbles? Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh, she's adorable. Mrs. Flintstone, is there a good orthodontist in Bedrock? Why, yes. We've got to do something about hideous teeth. They're so straight and even. Oh, Father. Why must you talk about it in front of strangers? <laughs> She's right, my dear. You know how sensitive she is. Frank, darling, shouldn't we offer our guests some refreshments? Oh, of course. Oh, Raquel, will you please serve some canapes? Oh, what's that? Our maid. She's such a gem. Ah, Raquel's B.S. de Resistance. Sauteed scorpion on a cracker. Have a bite, Mr. Flintstone? No! No, thanks. I am not hungry. This is our son, Frankenstein. Stubby, say hello to Mrs. Flintstone. Hello. Hello, Stubby. What are you doing with that shovel? Digging graves in the cellar. <laughs> Digging graves in the cellar? <laughs> and it keeps him in the house, you know. We call him Creepy. <laughs> Down, boy! Down! Wilma! Help! <laughs> oh, my goodness! You certainly have a way with animals, Mr. Flintstone. Indeed. Creepy isn't usually friendly to strangers. <laughs> That's it, Wilma. We're leaving. Did you see the bolts in his neck? And how about that kid digging graves in a cellar? I'm telling you, Wilma, I... Oh, look, Fred. It's Betty and Barney. Hello, Wilma. Oh, uh, hiya, Fred. And we're going to introduce ourselves to your new neighbors. Take my advice, Barn, and turn back. That place is a nut house. Oh, no way, Fred. We're dying to meet them. Dying to meet them, huh? Here, try to saute scorpion. Fred, give them a chance. No way. They're going to give this neighborhood a bad reputation. Fred, you're being ridiculous. I said I was going to do something, and now I'm going to do it. You're watching The Flintstones on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Fred. Well, another day, another dollar, right? Yeah, right. <sighs> Boy, that was some big yawn. I got up an hour earlier than usual. I had a little chore to do. <laughs> hey, Fred, would you look at that? Oh, that's awful. Huh? What? Where? What? What? Look at what? That, that sign right there. This way to the freak show. Oh, yeah, I see it. Uh, stop the car, Fred. Uh, let's pull it down. Oh, I can't stop now, Bon. Mr. Slate will chew me out if I'm late. Gee, that's going to embarrass the Frankenstones. Only a lame brain would put up a sign like that. No, oh, I wouldn't say that. The Frankenstones have got to expect that sort of thing. Boy, oh, they're, they're nice folks. They are not folks. They're freaks. Well, they may be kind of weird, but uh, they're very friendly people. So Betty and I like them a lot. And all I can say is you and Betty ought to be more choosy about who you like. What's that smeared on your finger? 
Is that red paint? Huh? Uh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's ink. I, uh, I was writing letters this morning. Fred, did you paint that sign? Me? There you go again, changing the subject. We were talking about the Frankenstones. And I said I like them. And I don't. So you're going to have to decide who you're going to be friends with. I don't like nobody to tell me who to like and who not to like. And I don't like people playing low-down tricks on their neighbors. So I'm choosing the Frankenstones. Well, you can have them and don't ever speak to me again. Fred, wake up. It's Washing Stone's birthday. Uh -huh. We're going to be late for our picnic with the Rebels. Forget it, Wilma. We're skipping the picnic this year. What? You heard me. I have no intentions of socializing with those weirdo loving rebels. We'll have our picnic in our own backyard. No way, Fred. I want to get away from the house. I want to go with the rebels to Mount Rockcliffe, where there's clean, fresh air. Sorry, Wilma, but we're not going to Mount Rockcliffe. <laughs> well, you want to explain to Pebbles? We'll go, Pebbles. But we're going to picnic by ourselves. No fraternizing with the enemy. Good thing we brought enough food. The boys will be hungry after their game. I'm hungry now. We'll play ball. Here it comes, Stubby. Right over the plate. That's some lonely picnic they're having, Fred. Yeah, but who are they having it with? <laughs> the Frankenstones. Ready? Ready, Dad. Nice catch. You way to go, creepy poop. <laughs> Baseball. That's their idea of fun. Yeah, too bad they're not enjoying themselves like us. You're a barrel of laughs. Well, I'm enjoying myself. Here, yeah, pass me the custard. Oh, oh dear. A foul ball. Hey, hey Fred, watch out! <laughs> oh, Fred, you look so ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry about that, Fred. It was an accident. Oh, yeah? You want to see an accident? I'll show you a real accident. Barney didn't do it, Fred. Don't tell me that. He's been waiting for a chance to pull something like this on me. Fred, now you are being ridiculous. I assure you, Mr. Flintstone, it was an accidental foul ball. <laughs> accidental on purpose. Frankenstone, you moving in was an accident. An accident for the whole neighborhood. Fred, stop. I won't stop it. Please, don't take him seriously, Mr. Frankenstone. When Fred gets upset, he says things he's sorry for later. Bam! 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 What is it, Bam Bam? Bam! Bam! Oh, my gosh! My baby! <laughs> She landed in that pterodactyl's nest. Thank goodness. It broke her fall. Fred, we've got to get her out of there. I know, I know, but how? I have an idea. Hurry, we'll take my car. Okay, okay. Wait, Fred. Wait for us. Too late. We'll have to run now. Form a human ladder. First, you, Mr. Rubble. I'm with you. Uh, you. Now you climb onto his shoulders, Mr. Flintstone. Eh? Creepy, help him. Thanks, Creepy. I can't reach her. She's too high. 
How's that? Still not enough. I gotta get higher. Dada. Yeah, honey, it's Daddy. Don't worry, I'll get you down. Fred, the mother pterodactyl is coming back to her nest. Watch out. The mother? Oh, no. Don't move. Maybe she won't notice us. Everybody freeze. Pebbles, baby, sit still. Don't move. is one of her chicks. Now what'll we do? We've got to lure her away from her nest long enough for us to get pebbles down. But how? Hey, hey, Fritz, I know how. Hey, hey, Mrs. Dacto, uh, look what I got. Give me a chicky, chicky, chicky. Give me a chicky, chicky, chicky. Give me a squawk, 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 squawk. She's following him. Good old Bond. What a guy. We've got to work fast, Mr. Flintstone. Wait here. All right. We're coming, Pebbles. Just sit tight. What are you doing? You just get pebbles. I'll take care of the rest. Good thinking. Fred, be careful. Don't worry, he's in good hands. <laughs>
wouldn't call it stupidness. Hmm? What would you call it? Stupidity. <laughs> yeah, my stupidity. If anyone acted stupid, it was me. I'm sorry. I apologize. Really, Mr. Flintstone, it isn't necessary. And please, call me Fred. And call me Frank. Then call me Barney. <laughs> oh, what's happening? I don't know. Maybe it's an earthquake. It's the Mama Pterodactyl. What's the matter with her? Why is she so mad? What did you do with the egg, Mr. Robbo? It's in the car. She's taking her home. Home. What a nice place to be. My beautiful wife and child, my great old pals of Rubbles, and for my wonderful new neighbors of Frankenstones, all I can say is... Yabba dabba do! Yabba dabba do? I like that. Thank you. 
This sure is hard water. I think it's just a pinch ought to do the trick. I'll have to hurry if I want to be on time. What's going on 
Grandpa Popeye. You spoiled our Fourth of July. Listen, kids. Fireworks is too dangerous. I'm gonna see that you has a safe and sane Fourth of July. Uh, who wants to be safe? Yeah, and who wants to be sane? Just a minute, kids, and we'll all play some nice games. Come on, Uncle Pop, let's play baseball. That's a good game. Let's go. Okay, boys, here comes the famous Dipsky Doodles rough pitch. Strike one. <laughs>
don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey! Walter and Danny don't get along. And now they're going to have to spend all day together. But they're about to discover not everything in their house is as it seems. Look what I found in the basement. And what started off as a boring Saturday is turning into the trip of a lifetime. Read this for me. Meteor shower, take evasive action. Because even inside your own home, you're never safe in outer space. They'll have to battle the elements. Giant robots. And hungry, destructive aliens. If they're ever going to get their house back to Earth. Don't miss the U.S. television premiere of Zathura. Tonight at 8 p.m. When board games attack. On Cartoon Network. Well, I'm glad you're still here. Now, back to the show. Monsieur. Huh? Where to, Monsieur? 
you in the name of the law. Turn to Looney Tunes on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. friend watch this triple double backward twist with a half gainer <laughs>
sorry. Return to Looney Tunes on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. The sign of the old world over. It's the poor what gets the blame, while the rich is all the gravy. Now, ain't that a blanking shame? Put out those lights! Schultz! <laughs> It will be exactly 6.45 on one quarter. Schultz? Yeah. 6.45 and one quarter. Mm. May I present you with this little token of our esteem? For me? Danke schön, danke schön. Oh, uh, just a little going away present. Well? See you around! Ha <laughs> 
Seien diese Telefonk SPC, bleiben Sie ruhig. Bitte, mein Herr, haben Sie einen Feinpfennig Stick? Hello, Schultz. I want you to... Oh, is that you, Mert? Watching Looney Tunes on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Fuck you, Mr. Duck, but I'm a sportsman. A great, great sportsman. <laughs> a great sportsman, eh? <laughs> sportsman. Listen, sport, you don't know the meaning of fair play. What chance has a poor, helpless, fluffy, little winged creature like me against you? You with your bullets, and your shotgun, and your knife, and your dip call, and your hunting coat, and your hunting dog, and all kind of stuff like that there! What protection have I got? A bulletproof vest, I suppose! <laughs> How did that get there? 
How'd you like to meet me in a fair fight, Mr. Sport? All things being equal, man to man, Marquise of Queensbury rules. Huh? Huh. That's different, eh? Yeah, that's something else again. Yeah, you don't like that, do you, sportsman? No. In that corner. <laughs> In that corner. <laughs> He's a dog. <laughs> oh, you can have him. <laughs> what a tramp. <laughs> That outstanding exponent of clean sportsmanship, the champion of champions, your friend and mine, our own, our beloved Daffy, good to his mother, Duck. <laughs> Something awfully screwy about this fight, or my name isn't Larimore, and it isn't. You got him, punchy champ. He's practically a dead duck already. Now get in there, sight. Go on in there, knock him out. Give it to him, champ. Let him have it, champ. Hmm, getting a little sin on top. How about a little something to stimulate the scalp? Now shake hands. Which hand do you take? Mm, uh, that one. Nope. Wrong. Guess again. All right, all right. I'll take that over there. <laughs> Ain't he a dope? You sure this is the one you want? <laughs> You're right! The right one! And here's round one coming up. One, three, nine, ten, you're out! The winner and new champion, Daffy Duck! Not the one to complain, Mr. Wefferee, but I thought you said no woof stuff. None of this, or this, or this, or like so, or this, or this, or this. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. On behalf of Bugs and his friends, thank you for watching Looney Tunes on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. What do you call cartoon stars who have become legendary icons? Stars who are adored by boys and girls all over the world, whose lines you know by heart before they even say them. You might call them the kings and queens of cartoons. <laughs>
Well, in an effort to save time, we call them Boomer Royalty. How do you do, folks? This month, let's enjoy the dulcet tones of one of Hanna Barbera's best singers. Oh, my darling Clementine. True, there's not a lot of competition, but no one sings Oh, my darling Clementine quite like one Mr. Huckleberry Hound. Oh, my darling, what's her name? No matter what scenario he finds himself in, Old Huck always has a song in his heart. Them's mighty pretty words. And for that, we're making Huckleberry Hound Boomer Royalty. Today at 2 on Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Next Sunday, Cartoon Network is popping with Pokemon. Yeah! We're getting ready for the newest Pokemon movie by rolling out 12 hours of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. That's 24 episodes of Ash, Dawn, Brock, and a whole bunch of Pokeballs. It all leads up to the U.S. premiere of the Pokemon movie, The Rise of Dark Ride. A full day of Pokemon kicks off with the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Marathon next Sunday starting at 7 a.m. We're rolling out the fun. Oh, right. Only on Cartoon Network. Better forget about Charles's wagon. Chuck wagon ding, Chuck wagon, get with it. The spirit of the old west ding is never give up. It is, Hokey. Put these feathers on, ding. What's that for? Just follow me, ding. This being Indian country, maybe he'll do business with Indians. Boy, something sure smells good, Hokey. I'll bake some mighty tasty pie, even if I do say so myself. How, sir? Huh? How's about us make them trade? What kind of trade, Injun? Well, take your delicious homemade pie, for instance. Okay, Injun, uh, what about my delicious homemade pie? Wouldn't you say it's worth a can of your homemade beans? Sure it is. Fine, sir, fine. Now, sir, isn't two cans of beans worth a sack of your flour? I guess so. Then I'll trade you this entire sack of flour for two measly pies. You mean I get my flour and my beans for only two of my measly delicious homemade pies? Right, sir, exactly. Ooh, you certainly drive a hard bargain, sir. Here's one for you, Dane. <laughs> I sure got the best of that engine. I'll have my beans and my flour back, and it only cost me two of my own pies. Have some coffee with your pie, ding a -ling. Swell, Hokey. You can't son conniving no good wolves in cheap clothing. Drop them pies. Now what do we do, Hokey? Run a little faster, big boy. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. Don't you buy him, take him, try him. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. Don't you want a gorilla you could call your own? A little gorilla be with you when you're all alone. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, we got a gorilla for sale. Don't you call him a monkey, he don't got no tail. And if any did, then Magilla the monkey would be for sale. With shoes on his feet, suspenders, and a hat on his head. There's not much about a dear little gorilla that hasn't been said. We got a gorilla for sale, we got a gorilla for sale, a sale. We got a gorilla for sale, we got a gorilla for sale, a sale. We got a gorilla for sale, we got a gorilla for sale, a sale. Except for Mr. Peebles, he don't like primates. Magilla Gorilla just isn't a mammal with whom he relates. He'll sell you a cat or a dog or a bird or a tiny goldfish. But down deep beside Mr. Peebles, he's got himself only one wish. Saying, We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, Magilla Gorilla for sale. There's a girl called OG and she wants to buy a little gorilla from Peebles. He ain't asking why. Just get that thing on my window, you can hear him cry. But she's got no money, 
Mr. Peebles almost died. Say yeah. We got a gorilla for sale, McGilla Gorilla for sale. Yeah. We got a gorilla for sale, McGilla Gorilla for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Won't you gotta gorilla buy him? I take a gorilla for sale. Try him. We got a gorilla for sale, McGilla Gorilla for sale. Won't you gotta go buy him? Sell McGilla Gorilla for sale. Won't you gotta gorilla buy him? Sell McGilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, McGilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, McGilla Gorilla for sale. We got a gorilla for sale, McGilla Gorilla for sale. Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Ravage the land as never before. Total destruction from mountain to shore. I must find those miserable little Smurfs, Azriel. Find them and rid the forest of their nasty, rotten, wretched little blue hides once and for all. If this creation of my sheer genius works, as it should, Azrael, I'll be able to find those horrible little Smurfs with no problem. It's ready, Azrael! Now I'll find out exactly where those Smurfs are. Show me, oh magic crystal ball, where to find the most miserable creatures of all. What's this? No, 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 I mean the Smurfs! Their village. But, but where are the Smurfs? Happy birthday, yo yo. Happy birthday, yo yo. Happy birthday, dear Dreamy. Happy birthday, yo yo. Yay! I hate Smurf days. Not yet, really. Oh, make a wish and blow out the candles, Dreamy. My wish? I wish I could fly through a new world no Smurf has ever seen. <laughs> Yay! Here I go, flying to a strange new world. Ugh, I'd Smurf anything in the whole wide world to be a space traveler. Ugh, I got it! It's a smurfy wind and... Whoa! I, I can't! I'm flying! I'm flying! I'm not flying! Oh! That was a short flight, but it was a smurfy landing! <laughs> yeah? Well, just keep on laughing because I'm not going to fly to the stars yet. <laughs> mm. Help to make flying broom. Place broom on ground facing east. Then say loud and clear. Witchy? Coochie? Smoochy? Smurf? Hey! Stop that broom! <laughs> rooms.
And another Smurfy landing! <laughs> Just wait! You'll see! I'll smurf to the stars someday! I think... I can make a pair of wings and... Oh no! I won't smurf either! Oh! Boy oh boy oh boy! At this rate... I'll never get to the stars! <laughs> Crystal ball. It, it's safe. It's safe. Get in, Harmony! Oh, I'm sorry. Hear ye! Hear ye! Uh, excuse me. <laughs> this is a Smurf boy. Astro Smurf announces the unveiling of his new flying ship. All Smurfs are invited to watch his Smurf Day wish come true when he Smurfs off to the stars. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're watching Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Well, what do you think, Popper Smurf? Well, it's a very smurfy flying ship, Astro Smurf. But how does it work? Metal power, Papa Smurf! Pedals turn the propeller, which lifts the ship into the air, and Smurfs beat to the stars! to the stars. But alas, it can never be. But that was a Smurf Day wish. Oh, yeah. And all Smurf Day wishes come true, don't they, Papa Smurf? Yes, that's been the way of the Smurfs for as long as I can remember. Which is exactly 543 years, right, Papa Smurf? Papa Smurf, we have to do something to make his wish come true. Yes, Smurfette. And I have an idea that might work. You really think my shirt will work now, Papa Smurf? Andy Smurf checked it over and fixed everything that was wrong. And I can Smurf off of the stars right now? Yes, but first you must take the special raspberry potion that will give you strength on your long journey. <laughs> the propeller's turning. Quick, send up the smoke clouds and start rocking the ship. Tell me, Clumsy, where were you when brains were handed out? Where was I? Uh, gee, uh, I don't know. Maybe I was with you, huh, Brain? <laughs> I hate smoke. My ship's moving. I'm smurfed off. I'm on my way to the star. <sighs> What's going on? I feel so sleepy. Must be the altitude. Oh, I mustn't. Oh, I... It stopped. He's asleep. The raspberry. 
Raspberry Potion worked. Hurry, get Astro Smurf out of there and let's take the ship apart. <laughs> is all apart, Papa Smurf. What do we do with the pieces? Tomorrow, we take them to a secret spot whose whereabouts only I, Smurf. Oh, goody Smurf drop. I love secret spots. <laughs> Add four grains of euphoria with the boiling juice of the mandrake root. Ah, now to try it out. Oh, the formula works! Oh, oh, oh. the Smurfs can only see me now! <laughs> there they are again, Asriel. Don't they look good enough to eat? <laughs> Come on, we won't lose them this time! <laughs> Is it much further, Papa Smurf? Not far now. Oh my, how much further, Papa Smurf? Not far now. Not far now. <gasps> is it much further, Papa Smurf? Yes, it is! But there's nothing but a volcano, Papa Smurf. And you always said, volcano, Smurf, fire and smoke, and all kinds of terrible and nasty things. True, true. But this volcano is extinct. Oh, of course! Extinct. Come on, let's get this Smurf on the road. We have work to do. Those miserable, rotten, disgusting Smurfs crossed here, Azriel. Look at their revolting little footprints. Come on, they're within our grasp now. <laughs> Come on, Azriel. No, <coughs> oh, you miserable cat, Azriel. How dare you? No. Oh! One of these days, Azriel, I'm, I'm. Going to turn you into a cat for a pillow! Why do we have to smurf our brains out while sleeping Astro Smurf here sleeps? This is for the Smurfs. Wait a second, Brouchy! Do you know what's green when yellow with big eyes and long teeth? No, what? Show me your magic crystal ball. Where are the most disgusting creatures of all? So, they're inside your volcano. That's not far from here. And it's the perfect spot to finally put an end to those miserable little creatures. <laughs> When Astro Smurf wakens, he'll think he's on another planet, and we want to be ready, so that's why I Smurf this magical potion that will turn us all into Smurfs. Smurfs? Uh, what's a Smurf, Papa Smurf? I'll show you, Bumsy. This is a Smurf. I'm Grandpa Smurf. <sighs> Where am I? Oh! I'm on another planet! This is Smurf-tastic! Here he comes, Clumsy! Oh, oh yeah! And look at him! He really thinks he's on another planet! <laughs> yep! Boy, is he dumb! I wonder where he was when the beans were handed out! <laughs> Beans clumsy brains! Oh, yeah! Well, that's what I meant! Bean brain! Yup, yup! Wonder if anyone lives here. Guess that answer's that! Kaya! <laughs> Me, friend! I'm in big ship! Room! 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 Come meet Grandpa Swoof, king of all swoofs! Say, uh, could you unhook my shorts first? That would be nice. Yup. Where you come from? From a, a, a planet called Earth, Grandpa Swoop? You friend or foe? Oh, me, big friend, big friend. Then we have council meeting and consider this. Stay here. Oh, I wonder what you're going to do to me. 
me. We're almost there, Asriel. We're almost there. Gargamel, we'd better tell Papa. Yeah, and is he gonna be mad? Smurf, we have reached a decision. Who? We decide you are friend. Welcome to Planet Swoof. Oh, thanks, Grandpa Swoop! Prepare feast to honor Astro Smurf! Yay! Yay! Boy, he sure is smurfy, Grandpa Swoop! I'm having a great time! You sleep soon. Need plenty strength to fly back to home planet tomorrow. Oh, but I'm never gonna fly back to Earth! I want to stay here forever! Forever? But you must go! Grandpa Smooth! Grandpa Smooth! <laughs> Where? Gar! Take Astro Smurf to Hut and don't let him out of sight! Gargamel is here. Astro Smurf mustn't see him or he'll know he's still on Earth. But that's only half our worries. Astro Smurf likes the planet so much, he wants to stay here forever. I must think of a plan. I know they're nearby, Azrael. I can smell them. I can feel them. Let me see. What's this? Those aren't Smurfs. How Gargamel found us, I don't know. But I think he's about to feel a bit under the weather. Yow! My crystal ball! It's destroyed! Now I'll never find the Smurfs! Slimy lizard tongues! My seat is burnt to a crisp, I'm soaking wet, and my crystal ball is shattered. What else can go wrong? Something tells me Papa Smurf is behind this, Azriel. Azriel, get off my face! You, you mangy bag of fur! Let's get out of here! Yow! Now, to become Smurf, you must prove courage and skill. Okay! But what do I have to Smurf? After we spin you around, you must Smurf spear right into that bullseye. What bullseye? I can't see a thing! It is the way of the Smurf. test ready. And for second test, Astro Smurf, you must climb pole. I'm Smurf's taller in my time. <laughs> It'll take a month to see years to Smurf that great pole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right. A zillion years. I hate greased poles. Here I am. Huh? huh? He's a Smurf. Hello, this pole isn't even greased. Isn't greased? Clumsy! Uh, oh, uh, I, I thought Greedy was gonna do that. Uh, yup, I did. Me? I thought Grouchy smurfed the pole. Uh, Lazy was gonna do it. You must now swim across lake. Okay, I'm a good swimmer. Carrying that rock. That rock? But that's absolutely smurfly impossible. Oh, boo hoo hoo. <laughs> Too bad. Ooh hoo. Say, you look familiar. Haven't I seen you someplace before? Who, oh, me, dear sir? No, I was just. I'm wasting. You want to be swoof? You swim across the lake with rock. Huh? Oh, this is gonna be easy. <laughs> is this some kind of a joke? <gasps> that rock! It's floating! <laughs> No wonder! It's pumice stone! There is one final test, Astro Smurf. I'm ready! You must prove you can live harsh life of swoofs. You must cook all meals, wash dishes, sweep, clean, and scrub. And you must kneel in respect before every swoof you meet. And guess is beautiful fate. 
But and all you can eat is wild grass. And you can never whistle or sing. No matter how happy you are. And no holidays, including Smooth Moss and St. Smoofentine's Day. So you must do all these things to be smooth. Well, on second thought, uh, maybe I'd better be smurfing back to Earth. Ah. <sighs> What's going on? I feel so sleepy. Oh, I mustn't go to... He's asleep. The raspberry potion's working again. We'd better smurf to it. Oh, goody. There is nothing like a smurf. Nothing in the world. I hate this. Oh, how much for the pop smurf? Oh, smurf up. <sighs> where, where am I? Going away again, are you? Well, the thought of flying to other planets is tempting, but I'll never be as happy as I am here. There's no place like home. Ah. Ah. Yo! This is Papa Smurf's handiwork, but he'll pay for it. He'll pay double. Yo! been Boomerang from Cartoon Network. On that, and KO Joe. Is the doctor in? It hurts when I do this. <laughs> Dr. Wasabi's evil empire is never gonna taste the same. <laughs> Don't miss the premiere of Chop Saki Chooks, Friday, March 7th at 9 p.m. The funkiest, kung fuiest trio Wasabi World has ever seen. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only on Cartoon Network. Hey, 
Wait a minute! Quick draw! You seen any villains? Well, I nailed them all. Ain't that ah. right, Bubba Louie? I helped two quick draw. Whose hand is that? Let me out of here! Message for Quick Draw McGraw! Why, thank you, random messenger. What's it say, Quick Draw? It's from the unnamed mayor of New York City. <clears throat> You are the best lawman in the West. Stop. Crime is out of control in the East. Stop. Please help us. Stop. We are scared. Stop. How'd you know that's what it says? No, we throw. We're here. Well, I'll be. A Someone is stealing a car just off screen. My car. El Capone. Black is very trendy. Look! Some other criminal activity! Hail Kabong! Don't frisk me! Oh. My heart! Hey, can I borrow that song? Look out for the hood! Yuck! Yuck! What he's doing? It's been quite amazing. Well, I guess that does it for city crime, Bubba Boy. Oh. That's just like Quick Draw. He thinks he can wipe out crime, but crime has really wiped. Him out! Everywhere. 
with a bunch of mighty little critters. They're called the Paw Paw Bears. These are brave and fearless Paw Paws, as everyone well knows. When you get in trouble, and this goes double, you call the Paw Paw Bear. Paw Paw Bears, Paw Paw Bears. Pawpaws pop up all around like magic. They're there. The troubles that you thought you had have vanished in the air. So don't forget those pawpaws. They'll come from everywhere. If you get in trouble and this goes double, you call the pawpaw bears. Pawpaw bears. Pawpaw bears. The Paw Paw Wild Guards toward the finish line. Here they come! And the winner is... <laughs> I declare a tie! They all won! Yay! And now, for the biggest race of the year! That's what I've been waiting for. Oh, what are we waiting for? The start of the Indy Paw Paws. That's what. Introducing guy number one, last year's winner, Rainbow Golden Thunder. There's Wind Sail Paw Boys, guy number two, followed closely by Laughing Paw and Papoos. <laughs> and here's Team Paw in a hot new sports car with a triple gas bell heated over charge one to one power engine. <laughs> and here comes Money Paw. <laughs> It's almost time. It's almost time. It's almost time. I know it. Now, while they're all watching the race, we are going into the blue cave. The, 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 the blue, blue cave? Are you ready? Get set. Race has started. Let's go. Dark Paw, the blue cave is the home of the creepy cave creature. I know that, but this time of year, the creepy cave creature hibernates. He's sound asleep. That's right. He sleeps for the next six months. Yeah, I forgot. But what do we do when we get there? We're going to wake him up. Ah. <laughs> Stop worrying, I told you. I'll bring the creepy cave creature completely under my control. Take a look at this. My new magic creepy dust. A couple of sniffs and he'll do whatever I say. By this time tomorrow, I'll have the pawpaws in the palm of my dark paw. Uh, pardon me, serene meanness, but you're forgetting something. Totem Bear! I have a plan that'll take care of Totem Bear, too. Now, come on. And be quiet. Don't you dare wake the creature before he sniffs my magic creepy powder. Or... Come back! Come back here, you cowards! Now you're gonna do what I say or I'll triple zap you where you stand. He does have a way with words, doesn't he? What did I tell you? The 
There's nothing to be afraid of. He's sound asleep. You, my slave. The pawpaws will know the power of Dark Paw the Merciless. You're watching Boomerang from Cartoon Network. left to catch but brave boy uh, this is really gonna be easy <laughs> Now, all we have to do is paint over the Mystic Moonstone. So when Princess Pawpaw shines her Mystic Moonstone on it, it won't shine back. And Totem Bear won't come to the rescue. Somehow, you double dumbs have got it. How are you gonna do it? Not me. You. Now, get going. Yummy blackberry juice. Get going. Steady, steady. Oh, mm. blackberry juice. Oh, all right now, get it right this time. Okay, ready, aim. Here we go, Dark Paw. We'll paint that old moonstone this time. All right, all right. Goodbye, Dark Paw. Bye, 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 bye. Be. Here goes! I did it! I did it! You did it! You did it! Yay! I did it! I did it! Dark Boy's gonna be so proud of me! Not 
necessarily. They're approaching the finish line, and the leaders are Ray Fox and Golden Thunder. But wait, I don't believe it. Here comes the boat. Give all of you a surprise! Look! <sighs> the creepy cave creature! He's under Dark Paw's power! Only Totem Bear can handle this! <laughs> Princess Pawpaw is powerless. There is no totem bear to save you now. You have till sunrise tomorrow. Then I take over. Right, creepy? This is terrible. Awful. What are we going to do? Yes, Wise Paw, what are we going to do? Without the help of totem bear, we can't stop Dark Paw and the creature. Please, everybody, give Wise Paw a chance to think. No, no, yes, no, maybe, mm, yes, no, perhaps, yes. If only we just might. I, I've got it. We need the spell unbounder. The what? The magic potion. The creature's spellbound now. But when we make him drink the potion, he'll be spell unbound. Er, uh, a uh, wise paw, great and learned sage of all the pawpaws. How are we gonna get the creature to drink the magic potion? I haven't the foggiest idea, but I do know what we need. But tell us, and we'll get it for you. Let's see, butterfly dust, ants milk, a few other things, and oh yes, one small dog whisker. <laughs> that last one's easy. <coughs> oh, come on, Papooch. It's in a good cause. <coughs> oh, pretty please. It's all right. You can come out now. <coughs> okay, everybody. You know what you've got to do. So let's go. Hi, Miss Butterfly. But uh, will you help us? <coughs> Please, pretty please. We need some butterfly dust. We sure need your help. Could we have some ants milk? Oh, wonderful! As much as you can spare. And oh, do you deliver? Boys and berries? Girls and berries? Butterfly dust! And one dog whisker from a very brave dog. <coughs> and here comes the ant's milk! About another ten seconds should do it. Stand by to move out. That's it. I've had it. This should be the most peaceful, pleasant night of my life. But no. I've got to be sleeping next to a hairy hurricane. Without sleep, I'm going to look like a sagging prune. I should look my best tomorrow. Uh, that is your best. All right, I'll ignore that tonight. But remind me to zip-zap you tomorrow.
See anything? I do. The creature's mouth starting to open. Quick, let him have it. Oh, look, it's the pooch. He's gonna be swallowed. Flying cloud, go! <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. That was too close. And we're too close to the creature. He's waking up. Let's get out of here. It worked. Everybody, take cover. <laughs> Sounds like he's hungry. <laughs> Maybe I'll let him have the whole village for breakfast. <laughs> Him up. Simpletons, go cut him loose. Uh, are you sure it's safe? Of course it's safe. He's my slave, completely under my control. <laughs> That's it, Creech. Get mad. <laughs> You're in my power. I order you to. Uh -oh. Slave! Are your wheels off the track? <laughs> hey, come back here! You're not supposed to fall asleep! You're in my power! Uh, I don't think he's listening. We'll make him listen. Come on. I said, come on! He's sleepwalking! Right back to his cave, where he'll hibernate for the next six months. Hey, you! Creepy! I'm your master! Heal! 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 Oof. Hang around, Dark Paw. He'll be out. In six months. Oh, yeah? Meanwhile, I'll zip zap you all, and there's no totem bear to come to your rescue. Oh? No, you won't. See that rain cloud? I think your wand is wet. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you something. What? I know that! Oh. <laughs> yeah! They did it to us again, boss! Trap, did it, trap, trap, trap! Yo! I'll get you for this! All of you! You later. Much later. Well, I guess everything's back to normal again. Up, flying cloud, let's fly! 
Boomerang from Cartoon Network. Hey! Walter and Danny don't get along. It's dead! And now they're going to have to spend all day together. But they're about to discover not everything in their house is as it seems. Look what I found in the basement. And what started off as a boring Saturday is turning into the trip of a lifetime. Read this for me. Meteor shower, take evasive action. Because even inside your own home, you're never safe in outer space. They'll have to battle the elements, giant robots, and hungry, destructive aliens if they're ever going to get their house back to Earth. Don't miss the U.S. television premiere of Zathura tonight at 8 p.m. With four games attack on Cartoon Network. Next Sunday, Cartoon Network is popping with Pokemon. Yeah! We're getting ready for the newest Pokemon movie by rolling out 12 hours of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. That's 24 episodes of Ash, Dawn, Brock, and a whole bunch of Pokeballs. It all leads up to the U.S. premiere of the Pokemon movie, The Rise of Darkrai. A full day of Pokemon kicks off with the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl Marathon next Sunday starting at 7 a.m. We're rolling out the fun. Oh, right. Only on Cartoon Network. Thank you. It's Yogi's Treasure Hunt. Fun, 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 fun. Gonna get a red room. They're gonna get a clean. Well, wanna know where the treasure is? The answer's up to you. Hey. Looking for adventure. Looking for some fun. The gang isn't ready, so get on board. We're gonna take a trip. Looking for treasure in the strangest places. Oh. Ribbles and mysteries, fantastic! Gonna get a ribble, gonna get a clue, put it all together, it's up to you! Fantastic! Treasure hunt! It's fun, 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 fantastic! And they're coming to visit you! Mommy, what do we do? The Martians are coming! It's only a TV movie, Sally. We interrupt this TV movie to tell you that this is no TV movie. The Martians really are attacking Earth. And at this moment, the leaders of the world are wrestling with this mammoth problem. No, that's not what I mean. To save the planet, the leaders are huddling at an important strategy session. Okay, let's try a screen pass left on two. Ready? Break! No, not that kind of a huddle. I'm talking about a meeting that's taking place right now at the United Nations. Like a welcome zill, you know, to the emergency meeting of these nutty-type United Nations. And now, uh, without further ado, or a don't, uh, here is your hep-dude host, Mr. Hokey Wolf. 
Play it down, you chowder heads. She, there is more racket here than a tennis tournament. Now allow me to introduce our first alien guest. She flew in all the way from Mars, and boy, are her arms tired. And so is that joke. Now here she is, that crazy leader from outer space, Dr. Mars. Thank you, thank you for that lukewarm reception. And now for my first trick, I shall blow up the Earth. <gasps> Come on, you guys, relax. It's not the end of the world, you know? <laughs> what am I saying? It is the end of the world. That's right. You see, 10 million years ago, the Big Dipper booty was left here on Earth. Now, if I do not find this booty in the next 22 hours, these are shorter on Mars, your planet will be turned into intergalactic pencil shavings. Hey, I would love to stick around and chat, Doc. But I've got a gig at the local fallout shelter. Ciao, baby. <sighs> to save the Earth from annihilation, the Big Dipper booty must be found. Its location, however, is a complete mystery. So the UN has called upon the world's greatest treasure hunters. Unfortunately, they were busy, so we'll have to settle for Yogi Bear and his gang. Nice of you to fit us into the story. But next time, try to remember who's the star of the show, Joe. Well, Yogi and those treasure chumps are after the Big Dipper booty. The world would pay millions for that lunar loot. I'll be rich, rich, rich. All right, we'll be rich. And no in-between meal snacking. Now man the periscope and get the treasure clue. As a, as a slave driver. Okay, you swabs, to find the booty, you'll need a clue. The secret rests in old Peru. The lost Inca Dinkas hold the key. The treasure lays beneath their tea. Gosh, Dad of Dads, it looks like we're off to find a lost tribe in Peru. But once we get there, what'll we Inca Dinka do? The answer is oblivious, my dear doggy daddy -o. We simply find them, Inky Dinks, and uh, eyeball their tea kettles. Gee workers, Snoop. I just hope we don't get into any hot water. <laughs> Howdy har, I'm in stitches, Blab. Get the sutures. But what if them inkery dinkery type critters don't want to give up the double dip bootery with sprinkles on top? I'll show them a thing or three. I'll give them a left, a right, and about face even. Says here that no one's ever met them anky dinks and lived to tell about it. Oh, then again, why don't we just send them a postcard, hmm? Okay, boo-boo, say toodaloo to Kalamazoo, and we'll skidoo to our rendezvous in old Peru. You know, Yogi's rhymes are starting to get on my nerves. Welcome to Peru, a vast wilderness untouched by civilization and modern technology. Let's take her down, Huck. This here automatic type landing device is my latest invention. Watch closely, folks. Works like a charm. Those drums don't sound friendly, Yogi. Don't be afraid. It's just a welcoming committee throwing us a parade. Let's take off a little gander look-see. peek a -boo, we gonna eat you. Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. Yum, yum, hmm. yum, something tells me these here native fellas are downright restless. Not to mention hungry. Sheesh. Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. This treasure hunt has gone to pot, boo. We're doomed. Well done, Dad of mine. The Inca Dinkas are cooking us to a crisp. I just wish hot dogs weren't on the menu. So on! Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. Yum, yum, tum, tum, eat em up good. Five o'clock, tum, tum. Quitting time! Yabba dabba do what day! So long, Charlie. Good night, Ethel. See you, Roger. Bye, Fred. I'm confused. First, they want to eat us, then they take off like horny toads chasing mealybugs. It's simple. Inca Dinkas only work from nine to five. Work day is over! Shocking. Then what do you folks do after work? We party down! There's a dance with 
Tweety doo turns the natives blue, go crazy. Twitch, twitch, when we get an itch, we do the twitch, it's nutty. Twitch, twitch, for the twitch is great, have yourself the day, get funky. Twitch, twitch. Yeah, we eat a dick, cause we're quite outside, oh baby. While these natives are grooving, let's get moving. Yes, sirree. We'll find that Big Dipper Bootery, or my name ain't Huckleberry Hound Dog. Which you don't. Who says to find the booty, we should look beneath the Inca Dinka's tea? So, uh, leave us commence searching yonder tribe's pantry for said tea bags in question. With this, Nazola, I'll sniff out that treasure in no time. When it comes to noses, my father knows best. And speaking of noses, you have stuck yours in where it does not belong, no? You can say that again. My nose takes a size 9 portly laser blaster. This feels like a seven and a half swim. Goodness gracious, it's the alien invader, Dr. Mars. You got that right, sugar lips. And I don't like you knuckleheads looking for my treasure, capiche? What's the beef, Chief? We'll find your booty cutie, turn it over to you, Stu, and save our planet, Janet. What's with the rhyming bear? Don't mind Yogi. He always talks that way. Very well. But just to make sure you turn over the booty, I shall take one of you as prisoner, yes? My nose is already being held hostage. Save you for volunteering. <laughs> what do you think I am? A miniature toy poodle? Let me out of here! Oh, woe is me. My dad's flea collar could fit a flea. What'll we do? There's nothing you can do. <laughs> That's what you think, Miss Alien Lady, ma'am, sir. Reach for the Milky Way. And unre-release Doggy Daddy this minuto, or I shall turn you into cosmic hash browns. I sense hostility here, Mr. Horsey. You're darn tootin' I'm hostility Then you must let it all out of your system. Blast away! All righty, you ask for it. Something tells me this here little lady ma'am, sir, ain't on our side. You better find that booty fast or your world will go kaboomy in 35 minutes. You gotta be joking, jesting, jiving even. You said we had 22 hours. Oh, my batch must be fast. The cup cookies for you. <laughs> Oh, don't cry, little guy. We'll save your dad and this globe. The Inca Dinkas hold the key. The treasure lies beneath their tea. Feast your private eyeball on yonder refreshment the table, Pleb. And note said punch ball, overfilled with icicle liquid type beverage. Hey, Snoop, do you suppose it's iced tea? Brilliant endorsement, Pleb, if I do say so and so myself, which I does. Shockins, ain't no booty here. There's no treasure under the table either. Uh, what'll we do, Yogi? You know my motto, Boop? When in doubt, take out. Huh? Get down and go crazy, man! Unhandle the merchandise, miss. I am a government protected bear. What in the world is Yogi doing? I think it's called a twitch. Do you mind if I sit this dance out? Suit yourself, Romeo! Oh, what a bummer! Oh, wow, the jukebox is dead, man! Looks like I'm a record smasher and a party crasher. You worse than party crasher! You offend sacred spirit of groovy vibes! Who? Moi? So, like, what do we do, Pops? We must consult Grand Wizard of Rock and Roll! And oh, I don't get it, Dick. How did you become the Grand Wizard of Rock? By giving the tribe my entire collection of 50s rock and roll records. That's how. <laughs> the hip tunes have been silenced, oh Grand Wizard of Rock and Roll. What do we do with this vandal? He must be punished along with the rest of his unruly mob. And there's only one punishment that suits the crime. They all must be sacrificed. This wizard inker dinker is really a stinker. Yikes! 
<laughs> Let's get this cookout smoking. Okay, cats. Time to draw a lucky number of tonight's first victim. Cut me a drum roll, man. And the winner is... Lucky number 66! Uh-oh, that's you, Yogi. Don't be ridiculous, Boop. I'm number 99, which makes me last in line. No dice, Bear. Your number is up. <laughs> Any final requests? Uh-huh. For my last meal, how's about Chinese food? And I'd like to go to China to eat it. Let the sacrifice begin! That food has got to be down there somewhere. I just know it. And if I don't find it in just a few minutes, <laughs> kablooey! The world will be blown into teensy wincy little pieces. If I get any teensy wincy, I'll be quite much comical. If this treasure map is correct, we should be passing directly over a real big mountain. Oh, make that directly into a real big mountain. Hey, what's the big idea? I went from small to medium to jumbo economy size. I think my size of blaster is on the fritz. Then let's call Fritz so he can fix it. You kids shouldn't play with matches. Wait till my cousin Smokey hears about this. Poor Yogi. While they're barbecuing that bear, I'll find the treasure and be rich, rich, rich! Matty, I am not part of your high-protein diet! Besides, I have to find that booty beneath the Inca Dinka's tea. As a fuss, as a fuss, I'm hip. To the native's kitchen, Matty. Gee, Pop, don't roast the big bopper. He's the coolest dancer I know. I mean, that bear is like, well, my dream dude. But Connie! Daughter, baby cake. If me spare this square bear, Inca Dinka Law say you two cats must tie marriage knot. Get married? Whoa! I dig those crazy wedding bells. Let's go for it. If it's all the same to you, I'd rather be sacrificed. <laughs> Control your emotionals, Blab. Sorry, Snoop, but I always cry at weddings. Do you, Connie, my cookie baby doll, dig jiving bear to be your hipster dream, dude? Like totally, dead you. And do you, yog man, take groovy chick daughter to be your main squeeze? Do I have a choice? And so, as number one cat of Inca Dinkas, I now pronounce you... Hey, what's shaking, man? Notley! Look! That canine treasure jump has been turned into Dogzilla! Hello again! I think I know where the treasure is hidden. I just hope I'm not too late. Monkey, my precious pint-sized pup! Where are you, my son? In the temple, oh movie monster Papa Pops. Wow! Had any luck finding a Big Dipper booty oggy? Afraid not, bigger than a bread box, Dad. But I have! It was under the Inca Dinka's tea all along. Tea as in temple, that is. And now it's all ours! <laughs> Let's make our getaway, Mutley. That's a fresh I dig it, man. <laughs> oh, no! Those two rats blasted off with the treasure! Oh, you silly earthly! The big dipper booty is no treasure. It is a time bomb! And if we did not find it in the nick of time, it would have blown the planet into smithereens! We finally outsmarted those treasure toads, Mutley! <laughs> We're rich! Sacred spirit of groovy vibes is once again cooking with gas. Mondo, thanks, hound dog cat man. You're plum welcome, Mr. Chief, sir. Yip yahoo! The planet Earth, she is saved! I wish I could say the same for my 50 foot father. Oh, that's nothing a good shrink couldn't fix. 
Oh, back to basic stadio. You're the greatest. <laughs> That's my beatnik boy who said that. Boomerang from Cartoon Network. 